Okay. Okay, wait. Hang on. No, hang on. Wait. I know I do this a lot. I know I do this type of video a lot, but I really love hor Halloween Horror Nights, and I've been really good about not doing another Halloween Horror Nights video. I think the last one I did was, like, April. But we are, like, 48 hours away from the new era of Halloween Horror Nights, and from a new season of Halloween Horror Nights, which hopefully um, will be awesome. Um, I'm really, I got, I got a good feeling about it. I know some people have been poo-pooing on it because of the lack of IP houses and things like that. But I think it's going to be really good. I always have high hopes for Halloween, for HHN, no matter what. And yes, we're doing this type of video again. I'm basically talking about my idea for a Halloween Horror Night. Um, how I would run Halloween Horror Nights. Or what my ideal Halloween Horror Nights would be. So I've got a story in mind. We've got Icon. We've got Backstory. We've got Houses. And we've got Scare Zones. So for this, we're going to go, as always, it's going to be, we're going to talk about the icon first, his backstory. We're also going to talk about then the five IP houses I would have, because it's going to be ten houses I would have. Five IP houses, five original houses, and, and the five scare zones. So let's get into it. So the icon, I've used this before, and it's kind of had uh, relative to connected to another Halloween Horror Nights icon, Ezekiel Kane. Ezekiel Kane is the grandfather of Albert Kane, a.k.a. the uh, the caretaker. Um, a very popular icon, and one that doesn't get a lot of love these days. Like, he's kind of thrown... Everyone loves Jack the Clown, but the caretaker, I think, has a lot of uh, story to play with that. So, Ezekiel Kane was a psychiatrist, a scientist, and he, he, re he worked at this um, asylum, not Shady Oaks, like for Jack the Clown... It was a different asylum, and he basically used inmates to use for his nefarious um, goings-on. And those essentially were um, looking into the world of dreams. You see, Ezekiel had this idea where he believed dreams were like gateways to other universes. like, And he believed that that was a way to open up further the mindscape and further broaden mankind's... like awareness as well as their minds to a greater higher level of plane of thinking and a higher level a higher plane of existence so Kane, after working on um doing these horrible experiments on inmates for so many years eventually he did find a way into this place called the uh, called the dream realm and going into the dream realm he never uh, like he found a way to access it he went into it and never came out for decades but now, this year of Halloween Horror Nights, the Dream Realm has been opened. Ezekiel Kane has returned as the Dream Lord. And as the Dream Lord, he has now unlocked all of the nightmares. He's basically like unlocked the Nightmare Realm. You could call him... Uh, and the Dream Lord is free. All of these different houses and scare zones and whatnot are the, dream, are the Dreamscape, the Nightmarescape, as he calls it. Uh, manifested in this year's Halloween Horror Nights. Can you escape the nightmare escape? Let's see. So we're going to go through our ten houses for this fictional uh, Halloween Horror Nights. And we're going to start with the five IP houses I would have. First and foremost, uh, Michael Jackson's Thriller. I've talked about this multiple times of how I would absolutely love to have a Michael Jackson um, Halloween Horror Nights house. I know what you're thinking. It's just one music video. There's no way you could do a whole music video on one thing. And to that I say all the time, watch. So the cue would be the movie theater um, you see at the beginning of the film, or like during the music video, the one that has like Michael, it has Vincent Price's Thriller and you'd hear the music in the background, like the opening cues of the music. You go into it, it starts as the movie and you get uh, spooked by, you know, Werewolf Michael um, you go through the movie theater, and then you go out into the courtyard, and then you get scared by zombies, including Zombie Michael. Um, and yeah, you just, it, like, it's one cool thing after another. You p basically go through the whole music video. You go through the whole thing of music, of the music video. You can hear, like, Vincent Price's, like, voice in the, um, in the, deeper in the, in the, in the maze. All of that. So I think that, uh, like, Michael Jackson's Thriller just is perfect for the Halloween. It's a perfect thing. I always watch it. and li I only listen to Michael Jackson's Thriller during the Halloween season. It's like wh why I don't listen to or don't watch Nightmare Before Christmas 
outside of the Halloween season to the Christmas season. There's a time and place for it. Michael Jackson's Thriller is the only time I will ever listen to um, that song during the Halloween season. So once Halloween ends, I stop listening to Thriller. Anyway, um, where was I going with this? Um, right, house number two. God, I should have written this down. <laughs> number two, since we've been getting more video game houses, uh, the next one on our list is a video game IP that isn't really horror per se, but I think it could work as a house. It has enough horror elements to it that I think it can work as its own. And that is Bioshock. Not really a horror game, it's more of an action-adventure game, but it definitely is a scary as shit game when it wants to be. So, Bioshock, this would take you to the world of Rapture, uh, the city of Rapture, and you would go through, get it scared by splicers. I could imagine, like, a big, like, uh, a big daddy puppet coming at you, or little sisters. You even have some big sisters as reference to Bioshock 2. I think it would also be cool to have, like, little Easter eggs to Bioshock Infinite. That'd be neat. But, yeah, I think Bioshock really lends itself to being a house. Give that underwater claustrophobia going, things like that. Um, anyway, so there you go. That's our next IP house, Bioshock. Now we move on to, of course, you gotta have these, at, uh, you gotta have at least this house every year. And that's the Universal Monster House in the IP section. So what universe, So what's the theme of this Universal Monsters, you ask? This version of Universal Monsters will be called Battle of the Black Lagoon. We're finally giving the creature from the Black Lagoon some well-needed fucking uh, spotlight because he hasn't gotten anything. Like, he legit hasn't gotten anything except a little cameo way back in um, the Bride-centric uh, house. So the story would be is that... Um, we are set in uh, the Amazon, in the Black Lagoon. The story is is that um, John, uh, you know, uh, Larry Talbot, excuse me, I almost said John Talbot, Larry Talbot, who is the Wolfman, of course, has been on the run and trying to escape the world. He's been, he's basically like in like the Hulk almost, where he's just kind of like um, running and trying to find somewhere secluded. Um, to you know, save the or the you know protect everyone else from his lycanthropy because he can't be cured of it. However, what has happened is that he's found himself um, running deep into the Amazon, thinking he'll be, he can protect the world from everyone else. He can be safe. You know, it's just endless wilds. And if he die, if something kills him in the Amazon, oh well. However, where he has chosen to hide is in the a deep part of the Amazon, the Black Lagoon. And the Gill Man is not interested in sharing his territory with the Wolf Man. So you are caught in the battle between the Wolf Man and the Gill Man throughout this house. And much like the um, Legends Collide house, every night um, either the Wolf Man or the Gill Man would be the winner. But it really would only be those two monsters. Kind of a smaller scale house, but I think like that would probably work in its favor of being caught. And you could also have like little cameos of other characters um like a research uh, like you could start at like a research station or something like that and it has like um like dr uh, like one of the ha one of the least dregs is a nod to like dr jekyll or something like that that'd be cool but yeah that's my idea for the universal monster house moving right along to our next house in um in the ip section because we're down to we, we're down to our next one our next house our next house in this collection um this one is i think one that i think some people have kind of wanted um for a while and it's one that like even though i am like even though i'm like hasn't this been why hasn't this been part of the i and i know it's probably like legal rights or things like that i understand that it's been so close to getting there every time like every time we've gotten there but it just it just collapses and that is finally yes we are going to do a scream house we have come so close so many goddamn times to getting a scream house that it just never works out this house would be made after um the stew mocker house that would be the uh facade as you go in, it would not, wouldn't just be the first movie. It would be a celebration of all six movies, um, or at this point, seven movies, um, seeing how if that comes out at all. But yeah, 
all six of those movies or seven depending on when this comes out it would be one celebration of the scream franchise and i can think of nothing better than that so there's house number four scream so final ip house the final ip house is kind of an ambitious one because this one would be like the fun house um and this one would be pretty ambitious but i think the universal team could do it and that is a mars attacks house could you just imagine like people went nuts for the killer clowns from outer space house everyone loved that house um for killer clowns from outer space could you just imagine for a second if they announced they're doing a mars attacks house how fucking cool that would be um that would be so fucking awesome to see a um that would be so fucking cool to see a mars attacks house how they would do it set it in like a like it would almost have that kind of feel of bugs eaten alive or it's this retro 1950s era you'd get you'd be attacked by you know big bug puppets or you know get shocked by people getting melted uh have people in the martian costume shouting ack, 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 at in your face there you go a mars attacks house would be awesome so those are our five ip houses universal monsters battle for the black lagoon bioshock michael jackson's thriller uh scream and mars attacks those are our five ip houses of the year for this hhn now let's move on to our five original houses so obviously with our the first of our five original houses our first one is going to focus on our icon of the year, Ezekiel Kane. And this is called What Nightmares May Come. And this one talks about the origin of Ezekiel Kane, the Dream Lord, and essentially where he came from. We get to explore the asylum he came from. Also have little Easter eggs like one of his patients was Jack Schmidt, aka Jack the Clown. Also have that he worked with, doc he traded notes with Dr. Mary Agana, aka Bloody Mary. That would be a neat reference to one they can't really use, an HHN icon they can't really use anymore for legal reasons. I don't know what the full extent of that is, but they can't really use her that often. So, to ha that would be a cool reference to Mary Agana. I think that um, that would be really cool. As for um, the next, ha like, as for like what the house would be, you would be scared by the patients he experimented on, Ezekiel Kane himself becoming the Dream Lord, and exploring the Nightmare Scape on, um, in a whole, as a whole. So, there's our first one. Second one, no house number two, um, <laughs> I, and I'm surprised this one hasn't been made yet. I'm surprised this one, this character has been used in an original house. Um, and that is, um, Beware the Horseman. In here, this is a headless horseman, Sleepy Hollow house. This one, you are taken back to um, Halloween night in Sleepy Hollow, and you fought. And yeah, and I know what you're thinking, but that's Disney. You can't. They can't do that. No. Technically speaking, the headless horseman is an in public domain character. So they can use so Universal Studios could use it. Plus, it would be a nice fuck you to Disney for it for um because they, they use the headless horseman in their um Mickey's Not So Scary event. So it'd be a nice little <laughs> fuck you mouse. Um, so that would be the story: is that you are being chased by the horseman. You would even start at the at um Katrina Van Tassel's party that night and be scared by like Brom or other like people prank pranks on you but as you go deeper into the forest you don't just and here's the other thing you wouldn't be just seeing like Ichabod Crane that night or the horseman you would also be attacked by the spirits of the other victims of the horseman like other headless ghosts or and finally at the end of the of the thing your final scare would be Ichab a headless Ichabod Crane reaching for your help like uh, <laughs> like just a bloody stump or, alternatively, it would be the Headless Horseman holding Ichabod Crane's head. Severed head. It would just be a horrible ending. <laughs> anyway, so there's house number two. House number three is a reference to one that has been done before. Uh, Night uh, Nightingale's Civil War. Na the Nightingales have been a race of creatures from Halloween Horror Nights mythology that are eaters of the dead, and they come in to eat the bodies left behind in conflict. And this, uh, the first one was set in World War I. They did a prequel that was set in the Roman era. This time around, we're going to be in the Civil War. 
at the Battle of Gettysburg. So you're being scared by dying soldiers. You could smell just death everywhere and see the Nightingales feeding on both the Union and Confederate soldiers. Um, yeah, that's House Number Three: Nightingales, Civil War. House Number Four. House Number Four is going to be a one that they've kind of done a few times, but this is going to be a, a little more of a darker twist. And that is the um, the Fair Folk. The Fair Folk are you go. It's all monsters from Celtic mythology. You basically go into an Irish pub. And you hear stories about the about Ire, about these Irish myths and whatnot, and you go deeper into a forest where you get scared by gnomes, banshees, fairies, the the real versions, the one that are actually scary and, and dangerous. So, yeah, the fair folk. Our final original haunted house is going to be um, this one is going to focus on the Mothman. Um, what this one is, is that it's going to take you to 19, the 1960s, and you will essentially watch all of the events um, of, the, of being scared by the Mothman, soldiers looking for him, all the way up. It's going to lead to the Silver Bridge. You, it, like, it would be an overhead final scene as you're walking by, and the scare would be the bridge breaking and stuff looking like it's about to fall on you, like cars and shit. There's, uh, so those are your five original houses. Let's move on now to scare zones. Our first scare zone is an IP one, and that is Ghost. I've talked about multiple times how Ghost should be finally at Halloween Horror Nights. I have said it multiple times that Ghost needs to be at Halloween Horror Nights, and everyone keeps saying I th it, like it should work as a scare zone, not a haunted house. And I gotta be honest, I think it could work as both. Um, it would also play like it'd be cool to have both Ghost and Michael Jackson. I was thinking of giving Ghost a house too, but it, I feel like it would be redundant. To have two musical uh, uh, themed houses um, the year. So one can be Scare Zone, the other can be a haunted house. So being scared by the nameless ghouls and seeing Papa Emeritus, hearing the music, that, like, y you would get so many fans of Ghost just to show up and go around that Scare Zone. Moving right along to our ne uh, to our next scare zone, scare zone. I'm not also. I'm not going to talk about where I'd place them. That's that's not my job. Second uh, scare zone. The second scare zone will focus on a uh, blast from the past called Mister E. Uh, uh, Mister Meats, who is this guy who would go around killing vagrants and feeding the meat to people in in Cary, Ohio, or Scary Ohio, Ohio if you're nasty. So Mister Meats Food Truckorama would be the scare zone here. Mr. Meats Food truck o -rama would be that Mr. Meats has set up a food truck rally and you're uh, the main course. Essentially, you get scared by, pe uh, by Mr. Meats employees carrying knives and whatnot, running up at you, or trying to feed you chunks of meat. So there's our uh, scare zone number two. Scare zone number three. Scare zone number three would tie in with, uh, again, our icon of the year, and that is, um, and that is Into the Nightmares. Into the Nightmares is like all these twisted monsters and imagery of creatures that have escaped the nightmare scape and are like the first wave of creatures you would encounter of the Dream Lord from the nightmare scape. So there's Scare Zone number three. Scare Zone number four. Scare Zone number four is going to be a, another IP one. And for this time around, we're actually going to go back to our buddies at Blumhouse. And we're going to be doing, for this scare zone, we're going to be doing a scare zone centered around Night Swim. Nah, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Could you just imagine? It's just a fucking pool, right? Like, it's just a fucking pool. No, uh, for this scare zone, we're going to be doing, um, uh, this scare zone will be centered on, um, the Black Phone, um, thought that would be a cool idea. Also, like, it's the Black Phone and Megan. Those, it would be a combination of the two. I know they're doing Horrors of Blumhouse this year for as a scare zone, so I figured bring it back. Finally, for our final um, our final scare zone is going to be a, another original one, and this one is called um, Sock Hop Slaughter. In this one, you're, uh, this is a 1950s scare zone where what has happened is is that a mass killer has has uh, arrived at a sock hop party and is and a group of cultists 
have joined that killer, and they're all killing all these, um, um, like, 50s, like, oh, yeah, oh, Johnny, it's just the bee's knees and all that, and they're just going around fucking killing them all. So there you go, sock hop slaughter for, uh, play, uh, for scare zone number five. Anyway, so there you go, guys. That is just a... I, I know I do a lot of this video. They're just fun. Like, they're just fun to do and fun to talk about. So you guys tell me in the comments below, what are your ideas for the perf for what you would consider uh, the perfect Halloween Horror Nights? Um, would you have a new icon? Would you create a new icon? What IP houses would you have? What original houses would you have? Just comment below. Let me know. I'm always excited to hear what you guys have to say. Other than that, hope you all enjoyed this. I'm Mr. Multiverse. I'll see you next time in the Multiverse.